Meow, meow. Trying a few new cards today. Not exactly sure how they'll all work out. Mostly trying out the intervention. In theory, it'll be good in the mirror and maybe a few other spots. Oh god, my volume's way too loud. Ah, sorry about that. Uh, not a lot really to tell. We've not been uh, getting paired versus mono red nearly as much. So I think it's safe to cut an authority and if I'm moving them to the side. Even though I actually still think they're reasonable main deck. Uh, not 100% sure about that, but I wasn't 100% happy with them either. Added a second Gideon because the Gideon's just overperformed. It was like bad the first day we ever played it, like the first three matches or whatever, but ever since then it's just been great. Uh, and we're trying Gideon's interventions for some f a few different sideboarding plans and an extra counterspell. Ain't no way I'm ever splashing a third color in this deck. Uh, hand's medium, but it's keepable. We've only got two lands, but we've got three things that scry, so... We also have Sensor, which can stop reasonable turn three drops. And if we just roll off lands, we have Fumigate. This is the type of hand that's very good in a lot of game ones, but not every game one. It's okay versus zombies, for example. Again, not great versus zombies, but uh, Relentless Dead and Dread Wonder can be a problem here. But the sensor stops the Lord, and being able to stop the Lord, well, it's pretty decent at trying to get more turns. Card may be a bit of a problem, depending on how fast the rest of the draw is. Like if they just slam two uh, different creatures next turn, and one of them resolves no matter what, that could be a problem. Either way, it's a fair amount of damage pretty quick. I don't actually like mimicking the zombie decks right now, but it's certainly good when you have it on turn two on the play in a game one. I feel like I pretty much have to counter that. It's just way too much damage. It adds an additional two that turn plus the three it would have after that turn. Hopefully he doesn't play anything that we need to counterspell this turn. And if he does, we really have to hope that we draw a land on our turn. Because if we have to untap and play a Supreme Will to find our land drop, not real happy about that, especially when they could just have a uh, the big thingy. The, I think it's the Mastery. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, well, we got that, so that's useful at least. <coughs> Still going to take at least another hit, though, and this card is going to be problematic. We have pretty good odds to hit the land no matter which one of these plays, but I want the one that gives me the bigger odds, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the Supreme Wheel. I wouldn't be able to use the Supreme Wheel next turn anyway. Kind of sucks that we put a approach towards the bottom, but we are playing four approaches today, so finding another approach won't be the end of the world. Uh, doing very well today. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? I've only been awake about 45 minutes, or give or take. We have the second Fumigate to follow up if they do have a Mastery or like a 
Dark Salvation or whatever. Oh wow, they don't have anything? Them not having anything seems great. Um, this can still counterspell some of their bigger threats, so I think it's fine not to tutor for a land this turn. Whereas normally I would actually love to be able to main phase draw spell. Really? Are they just drawing like all grasp and fatal pushes? And if so, they probably should use them on their Zombros. Uh, that was yesterday, actually. Yeah, that was yesterday. We back on schedule today. I uh, think it's fine to get rid of that. Really just need to land. Alright, what do we got there? Land-wise. Oh, it has to have something. No worries. It, Twitter, Twitter's weird. Like, sometimes it'll show you things that were posted, like, 37 hours ago instead of, like, what was just posted and stuff. Uh, it's, it's just kind of odd. I understand that, though. I am technically late today. I like to try to start to stream more around 1 to one thirty, and it's in the 2.30 area right now. I really should set up a set schedule and just make sure I'm on every day at that time, but... Yeah. As they say in bad movies, I like to live my life one quarter mile at a time. I don't like being on a schedule. Yeah, it's like how Fast and the Furious a bad movie. It's a fun movie, though. Not, uh... Not sure what our opponent's thinking about. Probably just typing on Facebook or something. Lord knows I'm prone to do things of that nature. Alright, well, looks like he's just... They're all probably bad. I kind of want Gideon. I probably don't need Gideon here. Yeah, I'd be surprised to lose, but I mean, you never know. Like, the, the four approaches can be in the bottom ten cards or whatever, and then we'd... Uh, I guess I like my life more than I want to censor this turn. <laughs> That's my favorite Fast and the Furious movie. Yeah, I, I do stream at more uh, EU friendly times. I used to stream at like 2 a.m., which was kind of always weird. Eight mana? You should have one untapped if you're just, like, casting a Dark Sal. Alright, well, we'll counter it. Actually, we'll, uh, cycle this, and then we'll counter it. I have not solved the newest one. The newest one has eluded me so far. Alright, well we're getting nowhere and we're getting there fast. Hey, thanks again to Eric Hawkins who, for the auto host, he has a wonderful stream and everybody should check it out. We'll take this thing. We don't want either of these either. Oh, we found an approach. A 
So now we basically have to live a very small amount of more turns, and we do have a Fumigate, so it's going to be pretty hard for us not to get there. Yeah, he's done. His draw started out well, but the two counter spells really, really was useful. And I have something in my eye again, because I always have something in my eye. We don't have the Limvalas in our sideboard anymore, which is a card that I really liked in this match. Sorry about that. I'm having this weird issue with my eyes that I constantly have. Anyway, so we cut the Linvalas out of our sideboard, which gives us a few less kill conditions when opposing decks that could have lost Legacy. And that gives me a little bit of worry and a little bit of pause, and the Linvalas may have to come back because of that, or maybe a Sphinx and a Gearhulk, or just we may need one or two more creatures, basically, is what I'm trying to say in versus matches like this. But hopefully we don't. We still have uh, we still have the cat scratch fevers, which are obviously great here, and we still have the, a couple of the sins. The main deck's fairly set up for matches like this to begin with, um, but versus these decks, I typically like to cut one approach because I don't think we have to usually get to the approach to win. And I usually like to shave a couple of the uh, cycling draw cards. I had been cutting the uh, authorities in this match, which the authorities have now become cards that I don't really want to cut. So I believe I'm going to cut the two Supreme Wheels now. Yeah, I think Supreme Wheels is what I want to cut. Still think the Gideons are good enough to play. They're good versus Restless Dead. They're good versus Recurring Dread Wanderers. Yeah, I think we're gonna try it like this. I might be I might be cutting a few too many of the blue cards. Uh, it's gonna take a while to get adjusted to new sideboarding plans. Uh, honestly hadn't really thought about the sideboarding plans for today's stream. I just thought about cards I wanted to try. Which is really wrong. When you're when you're building a deck and you're like thinking about new main deck cards and new sideboard cards, like you shouldn't you shouldn't just put cards arbitrary in your arbitrarily in your sideboard. You should have a general idea of what you're gonna want to take in and what what you're gonna want to take out. Uh, and that's something I didn't put a whole lot of thought into before I started the stream. I think this hand's fine. We have a Meltdown for a zombie, we have a Gideon for a zombie, and we have a Sensor that might be able to hit a Lord. Typically speaking, you just want to live long enough to cast a Fumigate, which was good that we didn't have one in our hand because they almost always have Transgress. Now we've drawn one and we just kind of hope they don't ever draw to Transgress. They could have brought in Nevers as well. I think in general this hand's pretty strong that we've kept. Oh, there's an approach. If he casts a Lord, we'll censor it. If not, we'll melt down the uh, Restless Dead. He has a post-combat Lord, or like a post-combat Liliana. He just got us. Uh, I think he started college. Like, he may not have internet. He may not have better here. He may have better things to be doing right now, but I think they started college. 
Don't uh, don't quote me on the starting college, but I do believe he started college. And I'm mostly playing this just to gain some points of life. Like, I realize it's going to die at some point, but... Uh, it might make him overextend to the board. It might make us get this Fumigate off at a better spot. And I don't really care if he kills the Gideon. It's not the main game plan. Like, this Gideon's just... Like, I already love this Gideon. If this Gideon even dies this turn... It, worst case, prevented two points of damage. And if the Gideon doesn't die this turn, like, it's probably going to prevent... It's probably going to prevent 12. <clears throat> but it's at least going to prevent, like, 8 if they don't kill it. We have double glamour now. Feel, feel pretty reasonable about this game, but he's got four cards in hand. He could have some discard spells. He could resolve the slow clock Liliana. He could, he could just have like a lord here, and that would be great. But at the worst case scenario, Gideon is preventing some number of damage. So it prevented three damage on that turn. Because we play cards like Ephraim Meltdown, there's a good chance that he might need to attack it with more than one card. Yep, so he's attacking it with at least two more cards, so it prevented prevented three six eight damage. That's insane. Little Gideon, you did your job. Thanks for preventing 8 damage for the bros. Hmm. Who put a sensor on the bottom? Yeah, they're, they're kind of interesting. We've played versus... Uh, 3 out of our last 5 matches have been versus mirrors. So... Uh, kind of interesting we're thinking about bringing them in versus mirrors and uh like they should just have a lot of synergy with a the little gideon b stopping approaches maybe calling in the gate occasionally calling a cast out but i think they'll be good in other matches too it's kind of at an out at a odd little spot here if i cast a fumigate he's going to get the relentless dead back and the uh, Dread Wonder. If I don't cast a Fumigate, I'm going to take at least 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage. Possibly more if he has another Lord. Um, I don't think I'm going to cast a Fumigate. I think we're going to try to cast out the Relentless Dead first. See, so yeah, I played a land this turn, so... Casting the cat, he could just have a removal spell, I guess. And it doesn't really re doesn't really solve the problem of the relentless dead. Eh, I'm just gonna pass here. If they have a transgress and they get my fumigate, we'll probably lose. But other than that, we're probably in an okay spot. If they have a second lord, they're basically tapping out, and we can just cast out this lord, so we still don't die to that. And that gets us around uh, the Relentless Dead on the following turn. So basically, we're only trying to... We're just trying to dodge a Transgress or a Lost Legacy. Don't mind to take a giant hit. Any hit that doesn't kill us is fine. And the worst case scenario, say say he does have a transgress here, we have we have uh, 
the option of like just trying to get lucky and find a land and a uh uh frig sorry a land and a sin between the two scribes and the supreme will The opponent has five cards in hand, but we have another meltdown. We have a cat. We just have an approach. Like, if we hit a land, we could literally just approach. Well, we didn't hit a land. But we can still cycle this for a land. And play a Caracal. Caracal. Whatever you call it. It obviously wasn't great. It does buy some turn though. He could have a removal spell to kill the cat, but even if he does, we have blockers at this point. Uh, we have a meltdown and we have a will, so it's probably okay. Probably going to be able to get another raff if we need to. Uh, Lost Legacy will be hard to beat, but Lost Legacy is going to be hard to beat in general, I think, without Linvala's. Especially when they open up on a fairly reasonable hand. Which they did open up on a fairly reasonable hand. They went turn they went one drop two, drop three, drop lowered. So one drop turn they played a spell in the first four turns. That has to be reasonable. Yeah, well, we're just going to slam the approach here because if they don't have a lost legacy, it gives us the most opportunities to win. It also gives us a decent life total cushion. We still have the cats that can block. We still have the meltdowns. Lost legacy would be brutal, but wouldn't be the end of the game. We would get to continue playing magic in the face of a legacy that's getting lost. I'm imagining there's less Lost Legacies in this format than there used to be as well, but that may not be an accurate statement. Alright, so we're definitely going to block here. Um, I don't think I care about them having the Crit Breaker, so I think I just want to prevent the most damage that I can. And preventing the most damage that I can is this block. <clears throat> Puts me down to 10 and gets one of their creatures off the board. They have an attack for 11 next turn, but an attack for 11 is not lethal. It's kind of interesting. So they have another Liliana's Mastery. We're not dead, but we're in bad shape. Or we could play to win just... We could play to just win next turn. Don't think I like playing to win next turn. I think too many things go wrong if I just try to win next turn. So. Yeah. I believe it's better to cast a will and see if we hit. And try to win over a few turns. Well, we hit a cast out. Cast out doesn't really do anything, does it? <clears> hmm. <throat> Does prevent a lot of damage on this turn, but preventing a lot of damage on this turn doesn't necessarily win. So that was four cards with the Supreme Wheel, one card for our draw step, so we know it's two cards down to get to next approach. So we have a few plays here. We have to cast out if he's gonna be lethal. And if he's not going to be lethal, we have the Ephraim Meltdown and a Cycle. Well, 
doesn't look like he's lethal, so at least that's good. So we go down to two. And see what our opponent has. So we cycle. And then we untap, and if my math's right, this is the approach. Yay! We can count to seven, friends. We can count to seven. <laughs> Seven's not one. It's not two. It's not... Uh, I shut up. But yeah, I was going to keep going until I said it's... It, you know, not six, it's seven, or whatever. If you're into chat, I believe exclamation mark deck list works. And you can look down below to the link to my Twitter. On the Twitter, you'll see all the deck lists I play every time I go live and a link to the YouTube. On the YouTube, everything should be in the description of any video you're currently watching. The deck list for that particular video. And uh, the links to the Twitter and the Twitch. Have to actually do some work on the YouTube later. I found out later... Or, or I found out late last night that it's easy for me to make my YouTube videos like suggest to play the next video. So, gotta go back through. Probably only gonna do it on the Fumigate videos or maybe like the Titan Shift series. Like link them to the other Fumigate videos and or Titan Shifts. So, you know. I don't think I'm going to go back and do it for the Red Deck Wins. I think Red Deck Wins is uh, way too different of a deck now from when we were playing it. And I also believe that uh, the Pummeler is just way too different of a format as well. Though I actually do think Pummeler is good again. Um, the less Red Deck Wins they are in the format, the better Pummeler is in the format. And we're just not getting paired versus a considerable amount of Red anymore. Do you think the this build of the deck's probably significantly weaker versus red than some of the other builds we've been playing, but which might be bad on a Grand Prix setting, because if you keep in mind, three uh three red deck wins did top eight the last Grand Prix, but we'll have to see. Oh, we're paired versus a three one. Oh, we'll play first. Uh Yeah, we have lands and we have one thing that can cycle early. We have a turn three counter spell, so like the hand's not ideal, but I do think it's well above the line of a keep, and pretty happy with this hand versus every, anything that's not zombies or red deck wins. Versus all of like the teamer decks and all of the uh, black green decks and like a lot of the reanimator decks and stuff like that, you just have extra time at least in game one. Um, red deck wins would be a problem. Zombies would be a problem. Uh, probably God's Pharaoh gift decks would be a problem with this hand. Cutting one of the authorities, by the way, probably makes us a lot weaker versus God Pharaoh's gift as well. I just can't get above. I can't get down to twenty-one lands. All right, so probably Monument, which is an okay game one. Pretty miserable game two and three. Probably going to cycle at least one cast out. Some of these matches I just don't think we win. And I don't think we can necessarily fix it either if he is Monument. He doesn't necessarily have to be Monument because he played this. This could be God's Pharaoh's Gift. Uh, there was an approach deck that had just played these. Like This could be a number of things. but yeah, Definitely don't want to cast out, I don't think. Or, sorry, the center. Maybe I do want the center. And we have land drops. Sure. Sensor could still be good. All 
Alright, well, I'm definitely gonna dump the sensor now. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I wish we had the sensor back. Probably gonna illuminate at the end of his turn, expecting to cast out his spell queller on my turn. Don't know why I got rid of one of those and not both. Alright. Fraven Inspector beatdown, friends. He has to play something at some time, right? It's just going to be a spell queller, but that's fine. It's a spell queller we could untap and even just have fumigate if we're lucky. Sure. Fumigate? Not a fumigate. I guess this was a mistake. I should have cast out that first because we could have hit a farmlands that we would have wanted to play. So that was bad sequencing by me. And we actually did get punished, even though I assume I'll be cycling this one. But that is the reason that we should not have made that play. I should have played the land post combat. Our hand's not very good, and game one's our best chance to beat their deck, so this is uh, not a not a good sign, really. Even a Gideon doesn't do a whole lot here. I'm literally on a supreme will any spell he plays that I can resolve a supreme will on. And the Gideon will prevent some damage. This card's kind of a concern. He's leaving his mana up, so yet he has either a third Quiller or he definitely has a Rebuke, one of the two. Either way, probably pretty bad signs for us. Either way, this is probably pretty bad science for us. Though we can pay for a rebuke on the next turn. If we had a fumigate, rather. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't know how far that gets us in the grand scheme of things, but something that could happen. So he's cast outing my Gideon. There's a Fumigate. And not only can we pay, we have a uh, Counterspell in hand. <coughs> so a Negate wouldn't even be good here. So is that one draw step? So we're six cards down? Can't do anything about the bishop. Couldn't if we wanted to. Sure. Hmm. 
so any one mana cycling card gets us to a win. Or just finding another approach also gets us to a win. I didn't think we were going to win this game. This game was looking like something I wasn't happy about. And then you just didn't play any more spells. Alright, so in this match, again, I think Gideon's great. Or I think the Sin's great. I don't really want to go below two to sins, I don't think. I think it's good versus God Pharaoh's Gift. It's great versus uh, Reanimator. It's great versus... It's, it's, it's insane versus Zombies. It's pretty good versus here. It's probably okay versus a couple of the other Scarab God decks. Um, I've toyed with the idea of Authority of Councils here. Because it's so good versus Oketcha's Monument, or however you pronounce it. But even when I drew a main deck, they didn't seem that good. So, kind of off that idea. Definitely don't think I want the Summary Dismissal. It's too much mana. Uh, don't think Gideon's what we're in the market for here. What do we got here? I think a 40 is great here. One for one life gain. Yeah, but... Like if you're not if you're not answering their board, gaining that bit of life doesn't matter. If you are answering that board, you probably don't need that little bit of life. Um, I believe the Regal Caracals might be useful in this match. They can attack versus bad draws. They follow up fumigates well, but they don't block particularly well. And the negates into the spells might be okay as well to try to beat their negates into spells. But I typically don't like sideboarding cards to try to beat other sideboard cards. So I think the meltdowns and the blessed alliances aren't great in this spot. So, so do I want the negates or not? It's the real question. Not having targeted removal like Immolating Glare is really bad versus a Spell Queller. This can get Gideon if they have it. Let's try this. We have four kitty cats, friend. Four kitty cats and some Gideons. This hand would be good if we had about a million land, but then again, we wouldn't have those cards if we had a million land. Alright, well, this hand's bad, but I think it's too good to mulligan. If they just have a like a one drop, two drop, three drop creature, we're gonna be in rough shape. Probably even have to play the planes over the prairie stream on the following turn. To try to catch your catches. But yeah, this hand this hand's pretty weak, friends. That's one of the reasons Fumigates isn't great in this match. It's an argument that I could just take out a Fumigate. Give me something I can negate, please. That's not something I can negate. And we're dead, fam. Don't really have any outs from here. They had their perfect draws on the play, so... Yep, don't have any outs here. <clears throat> Well, that was a little disappointing. Maybe these cards are better than I think they are, but I feel like they just... I feel like they just get Thraben Inspectors most of the time. Maybe these cards are a little bit better? At least they can get a relevant flyer? Fumigate can't be that good, but... I think they can get a relevant flyer. Let's 
trying like this. Uh, this hand's fine. Uh, not gonna be cycling the sensor on turn one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and play the, play the prairie stream. I wasn't gonna cycle the cast out on turn one either. Not with this many lands in their hand. Not casting anything if he's not casting anything. Hmm. Well, if I knew I had a land drop, I would use the Supreme Will. Then, like, just cast out his dude. But we don't know that we have a land drop, so... Let's just play this very awkward game that they probably play better than we do. We can afford to be kind of patient now. Especially if they don't add anything meaningful to the board. The way their hands played out though, I just have to assume they have a bunch of negates and stuff, which means this would be pretty, pretty brutal for us. Oh, uh, Spellquellers rotate, Selfless Spirit rotates, and that's the better card, so... Yes. I assume this doesn't resolve. And I'm not keeping anything that's not basic, or I'm not keeping anything that's not lands of this Gideon. Or of this Glimmer. Sorry. Uh, put on the bottom of the cast out. Put on top of the farmland. Alright. Well, he's obviously going to play some spells this turn, so we probably are going to have to hit a land for a descend. I think that's how he set his game up. Oh, that's not how he set his game up. Wow. That gives us a lot more options than what we thought we had. Really need to land here, but... So the greedy plays just a sensor and see if we hit a land. How many games do we win if we don't hit this land? Not very many, right? I'm going to be greedy. I don't think we win very many games that we don't hit a land on this turn. Wow, we didn't hit a land there either. Okay, well, probably don't win a game then. That was seven cards we drew that turn to find a land and missed. I don't think we can afford to do it again. Like, he's clearly just sitting behind a bunch of counter spells now. Thought we had to have a land that turn to have a chance.
can't even draw with a spell here. A spell queller even beats us. Can't pay for a spell queller. I mean, all we can do is cast this fumigate and still die. Yeah. Well, I don't think casting the fumigate gets us anywhere because he most undoubtedly has a counter spell. Yeah, we're dead. That was kind of insane. We went seven lands and didn't find one. Or seven cards and didn't find a land on that turn. But it's a really hard match to beat anyway. You put, almost always win game one, rarely win game two or three. I don't think casting the Fumigate on the turn that we could have killed two creatures wins the game. Oh, we have an opponent. Three days in a way, or three days in a row that we've lost a monument. Uh, this hand's not good, but it's an acceptable keep. It's probably on the bottom end of cards you'd keep. Monument again, maybe? I stand by, please no. Please not Monument again. I don't even respect Monument. I don't think people should play decks that beat red decks. Okay, not Monument. Could be red, green, ramp. Or could be uh, green, white, ramp, which is also a deck we don't beat. But... Never actually played versus the green white version, but I can't imagine that we'll beat it. Can't imagine that it literally. I can't imagine that it changes anything. They just cast ramp spells and win. Yeah, they just cast ramp spells and win. I guess we're gonna kill the Fraben and play the Gideon. Hope that somehow the Gideon can win the game. Could hold up Supreme Will, but holding up Supreme Will doesn't ever even feel like it accomplishes anything, because all they do, all they have to do is hit land drops. Like, they don't even have to resolve ours. Like, countering an hour here is obviously wonderful, but countering an hour here doesn't let me win, I don't think. Like, again, they still just have to hit land drops. They already have a clue. It's pretty easy for them just to have land drops. I will threaten your life total of my little dude that can't ever kill you. Actually, they might have blessed alliances of their own. I probably shouldn't be attacking with this Gideon. Uh, if they're going to kill it with a Fraven, I'm all about attacking with it. The little Gideon probably doesn't do a lot in this match either, except by time. Doesn't beat Ulamog, but can style a little versus Worldbreaker. We currently have five lands in play. That's six. Hmm. So next turn they can start casting their good things.
which is one of the problems. I'm looking for a cast out is what I'm looking for. I wanted to try to hit a cast out to uh, go after the weirding wood or whatever it's called. So now they're at uh, World Breaker Mana, and one of our lands is dead. Counterspelling, it doesn't do a whole lot. We have like a million lands in our hand. The one attack I made was pretty loose. We're 19 cards deep in our deck and we've not saw an approach and we're not even close to being able to cast an approach. As it stands right now, the first turn we could cast an approach is the same turn they could cast a new Lamog, like. Oh, they have their own approaches. Well, not happy about that. So they might be playing the better approach deck. I'd have to see how its matchups are versus the field, but I guess I could have let them keep that approach. We do have the rivulet to make them not draw it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they can cast Ulamog next turn. Or they can cast an approach next turn. We pretty well have to get to our approach to even have a chance. We'll take the cast out. It can at least deal with an Ulamog. Or it can cycle. Eh, that can deal with an Ulamog too, I guess. Yep. Looking bad, friends. So Ulamog killing our lands absolutely wrecks us. Back to Nulamog. Hmm. Probably has another. Still no Still no approach. We're thirty cards deep. We're playing four approaches now too, so it's kind of a kind of a lot. Could have probably played the Cataract, but I assume I'm casting the Meltdown on this turn. They probably have their own cast outs as well, so like maybe cast outing Dulamog was bad. Just not really a good game plan.
We're not. Well, we have a blotted cataract now. That's everything we've always wanted. He didn't play another spell, though, so I guess that's reasonable. Would cycle a sensor here? Probably would not cycle a cast out, so I'll leave a blue man up if we don't die this turn. It gives him a scry. The only spell he can't cast with this mana is an Ulamog. I believe it is, but it has it has problems beating. It's it's really good versus the other decks that can be considered tier one. It's really bad versus a lot of the more medium decks that's considered like tier two or tier three. Yeah, he's got all the mana in the world. It's a deck to me that feels like it's great on day two of a Grand Prix, but not great on day one. Having to kill our own land's kind of miserable. Wow. We've scribed eight cards to the bottom as well. Can't cast a Fumigate, because if we cast a Fumigate, he just gets this back. And he has enough mana to play... He has enough mana to buy that back on his turn, and then with any land drop, he can play that and an Ulamog. So we can't cast a Fumigate. Just have to hope that uh, he doesn't have it. All four of our approaches are in our next 25 cards somewhere. Well, there's one of them. still have a reasonable chance, so... Still have like a 1 in 8 chance of our next card just being Approach. And then if he doesn't add anything to the board, we have some backdoors, like another Supreme Will. Or uh, a Lucky Cycle. Yeah, we're running out of time here. We can beat Noodlemog now. We can, in theory, beat any card from his deck now other than, like, a second approach. We just can't beat a second approach. The Gideon wouldn't even be a terrible draw. It wouldn't be a good draw. Let's see what he has. Well, he has to have something, because he's, like, thinking a lot. Maybe he's thinking about killing his own Worldbreaker and, like, recasting it and getting a Nulamog. 
Oh, she's playing that? Well, that doesn't beat us. I mean, it's not good for us. It doesn't beat us. Alright. Well, we pass our turn. That was one draw step, so we know it's five cards down still. Or sorry, six cards down still. Five after our draw step. So it'll be the next card after Rivulet, so any Cycler will get us there. Providing that, like, you know, we have mana and all that. He has a in theory two turn clock. He's got those deserts over there too, which add a good amount of damage. Like, he's probably just beat us. I didn't do the math. A new Lamog. I've not done the math, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh yeah, we're dead. Seventeen, eighteen. Nope, we're not dead. We're at one still? Okay, that doesn't kill us. Oh, he's got multiple of those. Yeah, we're I guess we're dead. That's fourteen damage. This uh Sure. That's sixteen damage, so we're not dead. Feel like he should have left a desert up. Feel like he should have left a desert up here. If he'd left one of these up to deal three damage pre-combat, we would have lost. So he dropped a two. What's he playing now? Does he have something that does two damage? Sure. All right, so any cycler lets us win. The only thing cycling the rivulet does is turn off glimmer, I think. All right. Well, I don't feel like we're supposed to win game one. Especially not when he's got a million mana and he's going through 28 cars. But he only found two payoff, and we handled two payoffs. Ramp's one of our harder matches, though. Ramp is one of our harder matches. Alright, so we're trying some new cars on our sideboard. We're, we're obviously wanting the summary dismissal and the negates. Um, I do believe the descends are fine here. They're not great. But they're better than Fumigates because they can kill, like, like for example, that last game we had two Fumigates in our hand. But if we played out of Fumigate, he got the Ulamog back. So, like, we just kind of had to sit there and take damage. Whereas to Descend, we can play in those spots. And I believe we want to try to get his Interventions here as well. Um, one, he's already showed us that he plays Approach. Two, calling Ulamog in certain spots is going to be great. Uh, calling... Uh, calling uh, World Breaker in certain spots is going to be great. So I think we want to try all of these, which is quite a lot of cards. Uh, I don't think the Fumigates are particularly good here. I think I'm fine getting rid of all of them, though I may want one or two just in case he's on the Fault Not Seer, Reality Smasher, uh, Tireless Tracker plan. Um, something to think about in a second. Uh, I don't think the Blessed Alliances are particularly good here. It's the one thing that can kill Tireless Tracker, but, like, 
He just doesn't have to attack with Tireless Tracker, right? Like, you just use it as an engine. You don't need to attack. And I don't think most people would attack. Uh, I think the Gideons are still fine. It's something that he has to answer, and it can shut down an Eldrazi that slips through for some time. Um, obviously, it's not great, but I think it's fine. You can also shut down a Tireless Tracker, a Reality Smasher, and or a Fault Not Seer. So if he does have any of those spells, I think it's good. I think... Just try to one fumigate, I guess. <clears throat> but we're going to try it like this. He has cast outs and he has uh, world breakers. So the Gideon's interventions aren't going to be great or whatever. But I'm probably hoping to slam the first one on world breaker. And this is a snap mall. Uh, this hand's real bad, friends. But we have a summary dismissal. We have two lands. We have a supreme wolf. We hit another land, and we have three draw steps and a scry to try to find the land. So I think it's fine. We even have a meltdown in case one of those creatures uh, slip through early. Think this hand was a keep. I think this hand was actually pretty decent. Tireless Tracker would be annoying. Don't think I want to cycle the cast out just yet. I think the cast out's still useful. That could have come back to bite us, especially if we needed the Supreme Will this turn, because then we wouldn't have Summary Dismissal on the following turn if we did use it. Um, willing to Counterspell any Ramp Spell. I think that just gives them too much. The Summary Dismissal is better than a Ramp Spell, but I believe the Supreme Will is worse than a Ramp Spell. Yeah. So we gotta start finding something. It's a good good argument that I should have cast out the one turn that I could have cast out. Unfortunately that's too good, I believe. To just let him get lands. Alright. Gotta look for that land. Didn't get to the land. If we'd cycle, if we'd cycle, if we had cycled the one turn that we could have cycled, we could have played a glimmer on this turn, and I think we would have been in a lot better shape if we'd been able to glimmer this turn. Like I don't think casting the Gideon does much here. There's an approach. Well, we don't want either of those. We have to have lands. Let's keep a tracker on how far down his... Uh... Don't feel like this game comes down to this, so I'm just going to keep pumping this guy up because maybe he'll be able to take a hit at some point. Alright, so six cards down for their second approach. And now they've shuffled their deck, so we have no idea when that approach will come back to play. We know it'll be back sometime, we just don't know when. Yeah. I guess we definitely want the land. I 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so they can't cast Ulamog next turn, so. They can have, like, cast out Approach, which would be bad for us. They can play a World Breaker, which isn't the end of the world. Maybe without, maybe without the red Chandra's, the ramp match isn't as bad. I'm not sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they still can't cast anything that I care about. So maybe I just want to use this on a world breaker. We have a negate for an actual cast out. They're two cards away from being able to play an Ulamog. Um, that being said, we know they don't have a world breaker, right? They didn't hit the land that turn, though, so they'd have to hit land, land. No, I'd rather cast it on Ulamog, I think. If they have a world breaker, we have a descend. Of course, the world breaker is what can kill the Gideon. Not sure what they're casting. Yeah, because we know we didn't. They, we know they didn't have the world breaker. All right, so he sacrificed his land, and we have an effort meltdown. So. Let's prevent all the damage we can to our little Gideon. If you didn't have 27 life, we could start attacking. Well, that was good. Wink. Does anybody know? Does anybody know why that was good? Our opponent untapped, drew an approach, immediately tapped seven mana, cast approached, and conceded. We have to negate, so like, like even if we didn't have the Gideon, that doesn't matter. But anyway, I said that was good because of that. Cycle plus get. Yeah, anyway. So the, the green-white ramp deck didn't draw particularly well, but it did seem like a better match than the than when we have to worry about Chandra. Chandra adds another layer to that deck that's pretty hard to beat, I think. Um, anyway, if you're in the chat, you can type exclamation mark deck list, or you can click the link down below to my Twitter. And on my Twitter, you see all the deck lists. And every time I go live, and a link to my YouTube. And on the YouTube, if you're watching there, the link to the deck list, uh, the Twitter and the Twitch, all of that stuff is in the descriptions of whatever video you're watching. Alright, starting another match. So we beat a match that I expected to lose to, we lost a match that I expected to lose to, and we won a match I expected to beat. Which is kind of a little odd. Uh, thank you for following Steve Pam, Steve's Pam, uh, MTR I Pezev, Samba Domix, Danny ZY10, Veronica Ka, or Veronica Cal, yeah, Veronica Cal, that works, actually that sounds, Ver Veronica Cal? Sounds like I'm calling you a cow, and I'm not. 
<laughs> it's just, there's a K-A-L at the end of it, and I don't know how to make that sound. Uh, this sounds pretty medium. Uh, we'll get smashed by red decks. We'll probably get smashed by some other decks, but I think it's still above the line of a keep because we can scry away one of these if we need to, or cycle away one of those. Seems pretty weak, though. If I remember right, Rabid Panda beat the crap out of us the last time we played them. I believe he gave us Inconstinence. Alright, well, we've cut the 40s from the main deck and one of the 40s from the side. These are all uh, cards that I think are pretty good in this match. Uh, Brandon DeCandio got partnership yesterday, so starting at 5 p.m. Eastern today, about an hour and 20 minutes, He's going to be doing his celebration stream. It's a nice stream for anybody to go check out that wants to. I realize if you're into Twitter, <laughs> if you're into Twitter sphere, like that, or sorry, if you're on YouTube, you're not going to hear this in time since this won't be posted for 24 hours. But if you're into Twitch, keep that in mind that the candy is going to go live in about in about 80 minutes. Yeah, well, we're waiting on our turn to play Magic. This is one of those few games where the rivulet looks awkward. Like it, it does a come it does pop up occasionally to like it gets in the way of the prairie stream, but like it's not a it's not a thing that happens often. I think the I think even though the river looks bad, like I said, in this particular case, I think they're more than uh more to make up for it over the long term. That's a gate is bad for us as we don't have the sensor in our hand at the moment. Yeah, well the river no longer looks bad. Yeah, it's a pretty good time to get back into it right now. There's a rotation coming up in about a month, but like the the games are fairly interesting currently. So they only have four cards under graveyard, so basically I just need to try to prevent them from casting spells that matter. Haha. <laughs> I'm so precise when I talk. Would get a cast out here. I miss cons. I love fetch lands. Fetch lands do me justice. We can save this cast out for a little while to decide to see what he's going to play. Yeah, yeah, I really like cons. Or I really, really like cons. Can't say anything negative about cons. Cons was great. Well, I guess we... Do we have an approach? We have an approach. I think we still want the second approach. It's kind of weird. I never saw myself draw this approach. This lets us win on turn 7 and turn 8, and we kind of want to end the game as quickly as possible versus a deck like theirs.
man, that was my favorite deck in that format by a lot. The Abzan decks and like the Jeskai Black decks were probably the better decks in that format, but Jeskai Tokens and Heroic were just my Jimity Jam. So he doesn't even have a creature in his graveyard at the moment that we super care about. So that land can't be any good for him. Oh, they have refurbishes in their deck? So they're playing a little bit different of a build. Well, first of all, we'll see if we can hit our land. We're casting the cast out out our way, but... I like to look for the land first because, hey, you never know. Could tilt our opponent. Our opponent could be like, that lucky guy hit that cast out and like make some kind of stupid error because of it. <laughs> All right. It's going to be hard for us to lose now because he has to beat us in two turns. It is not very widespread at all. It was really popular in like Japan and some other regions for a little while, but it's not been very popular in America. This is kind of neat, by the way. So go ahead and effort melt down this. And now he draws what I like to refer to as zero cards. And he still has to discard two. Which is really cute. It's actually one of my favorite things to do, by the way. Well, we don't need any more cards. We just need him not to have God's Pharaoh gifts. So I'm just going to go ahead and cast out the one thing he does have in case when I'm tapped out he gets to put things in his graveyard. Um, what part of the world are you from if that's not too uh, personal to ask? That's all sorts of cute. We don't really care what they resolve now because of the second approach. So as long as it's not Mausoleum Wanderer, we do not care. Um, the better token decks are typically black, uh, black and white in that format because the Lingering Souls is just so incredibly powerful. Well, I know where you live, local. I was talking to Steve. Steve Spam is who I was talking to, which you know that. But well, he's tapping six mana for something. It could just be a big walking ballista. It was. Uh, now, as easy as game one looked, keep in mind that he drew fairly poorly. In game two and three, he brings in the gates and the spells, and things get a lot harder. Things get a lot harder in game two and three. Um, I believe the authorities are always good in this match. They seem like they deal with... Uh, they seem like they just buy me a lot of time stopping his things from having haste. Um, I believe that the negates are pretty clearly good here. I think the game comes down so much to dispellable spells that they're actually good here. God's Pharaoh Gift. Can't cast spells with this, but they don't typically cast it. They typically play Gate. So, and I, I mean, I'll, I'll double check the wording of the spell, but I'm pretty sure Gate just says put into play. It doesn't say cast or anything ridiculous. Yeah, put onto the battlefield. I didn't think so, but it's always worth double checking, especially on some of the newer cards, because a lot of them are worded very ambiguously. So yeah, that wasn't as good as we expected. Summary dismissals, 
fine, but not great. I don't think the cats win here very often. If they go, if they go to very small plan, the cats can win. Um, like the Seagrass sideboarding plan has them taking out angels of invention and stuff like that, and the cats do a lot of work versus those opponents. But I don't think overall they do a lot of work. I think the descends are pretty good here too. I I do not play modern very much at all. That's just that's that's just. That's just not even worth mentioning how seldom I play modern. Again, I think the Blessing Alliances are bad. I take them out versus about any deck that could have Fraben Inspector or Fraben Inspector light -like cards and Ministers of Fraben Inspector light -like card. Uh, since I'm bringing in two rafts, I like to cut some rafts, but not all of them. Um, it might be worth actually just keeping the rafts. The Gideons don't seem particularly good here. Um, the meltdowns don't seem great. Yeah, you're probably better than Hieroglyph. The one thing I'm trying to decide is whether I want the cat or not. Don't think I'm going to play with the cat on the play. I think I'll bring them in on... Uh, so, sorry, I don't think I want them on the play. I think I'll try to bring them in on the draw. Sorry. I'll, I'll spit it out right. I don't think I want them on the draw. I think I will try them on the play. But yeah, I believe this is what I'm going to submit. I did play I did play Modern over the weekend. I posted a couple of Titan Shift videos, but I don't play very much Modern. Um, this hand's not great, but we have three draw steps before... Two draw steps before we super want a blue land. Three draw steps before it feels like it's the end of the world if we don't have it. And I believe the 40 is extremely good in this match. Good enough that I'm willing to keep a weak hand that has an authority in it. I believe this match to be kind of long, so... Well, that card's great. After a meltdown on that card, it's kind of good too, but. Go ahead and give him a reason to use this thing. If he wants to keep the Wonder, that's fine. If he wants to keep the Gate, that's fine. I don't care which one he keeps. Save the meltdown for whenever he buys back the wonder. This champion of wits can't to resolve. It's too good. Gives him too much in the way of like filtering and stuff. Rip. That's bad for us. Don't do well when we miss lands, folks. I didn't want to use the Meltdown there, even though there's a good argument that I should have used the Meltdown there. I guess we'll just try to prevent what damage we can. Yeah, Cycling is back and great. I wish we had a Cycler in our hand. Well, we're not going to win any game where we just set on three lands forever. Our opponent's probably 21 land decks, just hard drawing lands better. And that card probably kills us. Probably extremely hard for us to come back from them having a second wonder because they're probably got some kind of counter spell in their hand as well. And they have the rivulet. Yeah, this match is not a good match. Post board. Don't know how we're going to beat Double Wanderer. Don't know how we beat two of this spell. 
that can come back twice. Guess we can beat it if they never get a God's Pharaoh's gift or enough creatures in their graveyard, but that seems unlikely. Nope. Looks like it was pretty unlikely. A cast out right now would be a drawable spell, but I don't know how much it would do. Yeah, don't think either of those cards really do anything either. He's just going to get Maelstrom Wanderer back twice, right? And then we're going to be dead. Your Rift Slide was my my onslaught block of deck, onslaught block deck of choice as well. Well, Champion of Wits is good. Might have had a chance this game if we hadn't missed two land drops, but... This, hand's... this match is pretty hard regardless. Maybe he'll buy back to Champion of Wits and we can steal a game with a Descend. That probably doesn't even steal a game. And he's unlikely to do it. Oh, that's a good one for him, too. Just don't know how we beat the second Descend. Or, sorry, the second Maelstrom Wonder. We know this is getting counterspelled, so we'd rather it get counterspelled than the Descend. And we're dead on board for two attacks, and he's got another counter spell we can't stop. On the very, very positive note, this gives us a point of life when he gets that back. So, like, maybe there's some innate world out there where we hit another one. And we're dead. He's got 9 damage in play. We have 8 life. Beating double Milstrom Wonder that counterspells 4 spells is probably not something we're able to do. And we were right not to bring these in because he did have the angels. And this was the main reason I didn't want those in. The angel just trades with this too efficiently. That being said... Our game plan really doesn't win, right? Like, what we're trying to do doesn't win game two and three. I need a meltdown, just ain't worth it. Guess I'd rather have you and you than a meltdown. I like how I changed my mind about five times sideboarding because I don't think any of our uh, don't think any of our sideboard plans work here. We even had authority, which is our good sideboard card versus them. It just didn't matter. Again, maybe, maybe something would have mattered had we not missed those two land drops, but I don't think so. I think if we drew those same cards in a different order, that the results aren't much different, if any. I 
wonder if the stream is interested in learning Eternal at all, or if I should just stick to Magic. My buddy started uh, posting YouTube videos yesterday on Path of Exile, Path to Exile, a game that we play. It's kind of like a Diablo clone, but uh, it's a little bit better than Diablo. Anyway, like he got close to 400 hits in one night. Most of my magic videos don't even get 100 hits, so I'm wondering if I should spend a couple hours on not making one of those videos as well. But I like magic. Magic's all I really want to stream. Just, if people would like to see other things, I can do other things. That's all I'm getting at. Magic is my everything. Wee. I got seven seconds to rethink this fumigate. Turtles a pretty fun game. It's my favorite uh, free to play grind type game. Ma Magic is definitely my favorite game. I like it. Poker used to be my favorite game, but I like Magic more than poker these days. All right, we'll keep this hand. It's a little weak. It's a little slow. It's actually not particularly good. With the current hand we have, the dispel feels almost like a mulligan, and we clearly have some pretty awkward lands here. But we do have what I consider our best cyborg card for the match, and we do have one cycler or a card that may be able to nail a gate. Or a refurbish, depending on how good their hand is. Pretty sure Rabbit Panda crushed us last time we played him as well. I think we won game one and they won game two and three. Which is how I think this matchup typically goes. I think this matchup needs improved a little bit, but off the top of my head, I'm not sure how to improve it. I saw somebody suggest scavenging ground over the Blighted Cataract, which is probably reasonable. The Cataract doesn't do a lot of work, but it doesn't do no work. But the problem is, like, then that's just a one-of card. So, like, how often are we going to draw it that it matters? Probably doesn't change the matchup any. Just on how infrequently it can be drawn in that spot. So opponents either went to get a drink, playing on Facebook or Twitter, you know, maybe multi-queuing, or he's got a hard mulligan decision. Not sure which it is. It's one of the things about not being able to look your opponent in the face while you're playing is you can't really tell. There's no, like, little live reads or whatever. Like, he might not even be at his computer. We're just kind of, like, sitting here waiting on him. Could be getting DC'd. Keep saying he. I should be saying them. They. Opponent Arino. Either way, they kept seven. Yeah, they have their best turn one play. Well, second authority might be cute, but again, the problem is really just their Maelstrom Wonder and their counter spells. Like if they if they didn't have negates and they didn't have Maelstrom Wonder in their deck, I would not care what they played ever. My phone's ringing. I don't know if you guys can hear it. If you can, I apologize. So we have some counter spells. Counter spells are like, like stuffs. I guess I want to get value out of the cast out while we can, the negate. Nah. They just have a second gate. How bad is that for us? Nah, 
we'll get value out of the sensor while we can. I think I even said cast out a second ago. Well, there's a descend, so. The sad thing is we still need at least three turns to play an approach and a draw an approach, so we're four turns away from having any shot at winning. He's doing all that, I'm assuming he has a refurbish in his hand. He's got six creatures. Yeah, well, we knew he had to refurbish. Or we thought he had to refurbish. And if he's got any relevant spells, we're pretty hurting now. Does have a Mausoleum Wonder already in the grave. he doesn't play anything that means he either has all land and all counter or all counter spells which also isn't good for us well our hands bad so the spell doesn't do anything here we can't cast the Descent. Bluffing doesn't do anything. Most opponents don't play around bluffs. Uh, maybe at like a Grand Prix or a Pro Tour setting they do, but definitely not on Moto Leagues, not at your Friday Night Magics, not at the majority of your IQs or like PPDQs or whatever. So, uh, I just have to hope they don't have anything. They could just have like a couple of Angel of Sanctions in their board or whatever. Unfortunately, like a second kitty is probably our best draw here. Did not draw another kitty. They're going to combine block one of those. Get a dude in their grave. And now we're at a problem. If they just untap and have like lands God Pharaoh's gift, there's nothing we can do about it. We have to hit. Well, they didn't. They could have also just had like a land get back champion of the wits, which is good for them as well. Either way, we're in real bad shape. Again, just drawing another cat is our best possible draw, I think. probably win the game if we draw another cat. We probably don't if we don't. We probably have to do it this turn. Cast outs would also be acceptable. Alright, well, summary dismissal's not nothing. It's actually pretty good here. Unfortunately, we're still probably going to have to draw a cat because he will be able to double block next turn. Well, okay, he won't be able to double block next turn, but. I really want to draw that cat, friends. Blue, blue, colorless, colorless. Summary dismiss a gate. He's going to have at least one negator to spell. Hopefully he didn't draw a second. Uh, so hopefully he didn't top deck a second. He already has at least one negate and one to spell on his sideboard. So. Uh. Alright, well, he hit one. What do you do? pretty unfortunate for us like that's running pretty good for him uh, 
so our best draw step because he chose that card is still just drawing a cat. A cat or a cast out is our best two cards. Supreme Will is not a particularly good one. I assume he counterspells it, but he may not. Alright, well, he didn't counterspell it, so. I guess we just have to grab the land. It's going to be pretty impossible for us to win at this point. He just has too much going for him. He starts buying back the champion of wits now and goes crazy. We had outs though. I mean, we didn't draw particularly well. We drew only one cycler, no glimmer, no uh, no supreme will until that turn. Like we drew, we drew very badly. Well, opponent doesn't have a Mausoleum Wonder in his graveyard. Which gives us... He's down to 22 cards in his deck, so he's going to have found another negate. Him drawing a negate on exactly that turn... Just too brutal. The sad thing is, like, we have a million life, but the game's just over. Yeah, shouldn't have done that, probably. Alright, well, we're dead. I'm not gonna waste, uh chat's time yep like i said game one's very easy in that match game two and three very hard and we just witnessed that though i do think that his draw game three that we beat the majority of time he, he just hit a spell when he had to have it and we drew extremely poorly but like that was a below average draw for him to begin with it wasn't like it wasn't like that was a good draw we were going to beat or or that we even had a chance to beat Anyway, if you're in the chat, you can always type exclamation mark deck list to see the deck list, or you can click the link down below to the Twitter. On the Twitter, you see all the deck lists that I play every time I go live, and a link to my YouTube channel. And on my YouTube channel, uh, if you're watching videos there, the description to the Twitch, the Twitter, and all the deck lists are, or links to all of them are in the description. All right, this hand's fine. It's just really hard to beat the decks that can put clocks on the board with counter spells. Wait, what? What? How is there not a current deck list set? That makes no sense. No deck set, click star to set current deck. Um, Alright, star to click current deck. I guess that works. This link probably works too, doesn't it? This website seems like it's a little slow to load for me. I'm new to this website, uh, a Murph. Murph um, from the stream of Murphix linked it to us. Yeah, I think I think that works. I don't know. Anyway, like I said, this hand's pretty good. I never even asked the the bot to come. I still have I still have playing to do. Let's put it that way. Like all of that's pretty new to me. All right. Well, our hand's kind of weak versus zombies. We'll be using a blessed alliance on this first little zombro.
Oh, so I don't even have to set it on MTG bot. So it's like, I want one or the other one? That's kind of odd. <laughs> I like how I named it 2G. Because there's two Gideons in the deck. <laughs> Alright, well. Alright, so I'm learning today. Enters the battlefield under their control. Alright, well that's not something we're going to worry about this turn, because we're just going to counterspell whatever they play. I've not played versus black-white zombies in months. It's kind of interesting. Alright, well, we don't have anything to use on you, good buddy. We'll just take our two damage and go on about our day. So keep in mind, in about 45 minutes, Mr. DeCandio will be on for his partner celebration stream. It should be a fun time. I'll probably be in there and or lurking most of the evening. Small workout after my stream and then probably head there. Very small workout, because I about killed myself yesterday. It, it was not good for me. So I have a cast out we can play here, if they play anything relevant. Uh, so that thing's going to get bigger if the Lord resolves, so I kind of think that I just want to kill the... So we take 3 damage every turn the rest of the game, or we take 2 damage and get absolutely wrecked by the... Mastery? Uh, Mastery gives us more turns because the Mastery doesn't attack on the following turn, and it's going to stop that from taking damage, so I'm going to leave the Lord up. Well, that was disappointing. We were hoping he didn't have another follow-up. I guess we're going to at least play one of these. It'll depend on what our opponent plays, how much we cycle and or use cast outs on this, or on this following turn. If he just attacks us for four, we're probably... Probably going to just cast out the Lord of the Cursed. Could be an argument for cast outing that, but I really don't care how many cards they draw. Another Lord, sure. All right, well, there's an approach, so we just need to find an untapped land before we die, and we're good. Untapped land before we die, and we good. You can also draw Fumigates to get f more turns. That's a good one. Sure. Decent amount of damage. Oh, well, we have a problem here, friends. Not drawing the land. We pretty well have to hit Fumigate and or the land exactly next turn to have any chance. And the land may not be good enough, depending on what they have in their draw. Wow. feel like we just fogged. That was so good for us. Now we go to 16.
It'd be pretty hard for him to beat us if we hit the land now. We'd have been on a pretty decent clock if he didn't hit the land. So I guess he wants to draw a card here? Should probably draw a card. I don't know. Land or Fumigate, please. Alright, there's a land. So he's got to deal 21 damage this turn and or have discard spells in the main deck. Did I count wrong? No, no. It must have just been lag. Sorry. It's 17 damage if he has a mastery. Um, if he had a land double lord, it would kill us. But that's about it. And it would have to be the last two lords in the deck. So land and two lord of the cursed is what we're really wanting to fade. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned it either or, or I, earlier, and I uh, am horrible at pronouncing names, so I apologize if he's watching this and or I'm pronouncing his name wrong, but Chris Maschioli was the guy who suggested the Gideon's intervention, and so far I kind of like them. All right. Well, we take a big point of we take a lot of life loss here and hope that he doesn't have a transgress in the main deck. Alright, move on to the next game versus Zombros. I don't know what all the white cards are in the deck. I'm assuming that there's some number of the zombies we saw in like probably some anguish unmakings. Um, I got a couple of these. I think the Gideons are fine versus Zombies, the Alliances seem fine, the Meltdowns, the Sensors, the Glimmers. All of this stuff seems fine versus Zombies. I'm going to shave one approach on the draw. And get rid of a couple Supreme Wheels. I think it's about just fine getting to 5 mana. Maybe maybe the Cats are not worth it, but I am, I've got burnt by Lost Legacy so much that... That scares me to death not to consider them. Um, so five mana. We have two already. I think this hand's a mulligan. I think we need to find some sensors or something. Well, we know this hand's a mulligan. All right. Well, I believe this is the best hand that we've had so far. I actually believe I want to keep that as well. Keeping the Supreme Will might have been a little bit much. Probably have to fade discard spells this game. Drawing in a sensor, a meltdown, or a blessed alliance would be pretty nice here. That's a cat. Cat scratch fever. Eh, I'm sorry. Well, Gideon should prevent a lot of damage on this board now. Really want to draw a land. That's not a land. I think I'm starting to lag. I don't know if the stream's sputtering or whatever. I'm not really dropping frames. Maybe it's just Moto then. I 
If we hit lands, we have a very good hand. We have this thing to f try to find lands. Evolving wilds and zombies. Well, that was pretty good. But again, prevents a bunch of damage. Oh, well, he's just attacking my face. Still preventing a bunch of damage. Have to hit a land out of these four cards. Alright, well, we hit a land out of those four cards, so... We have some outs. Again, we have to hit a land on our very next card, too, or we're just Dobbs. It's got to be an untapped land, too, which is all of our lands, but some uh, some of these builds splash a third color and or play Port Town, which is why I like to mention that it has to be an untapped land. And this game state actually arises pretty often, I think. All right, so opponent went absolutely nuts, but I think if we hit the land, it's going to be hard for us to lose. In fact, he should probably kill the Gideon. Because he has such a large board. Ah, did we hit the land? We did not hit the land. Well, that's ridiculous and annoying. Very, very annoying that we don't hit land five. Wasn't going to hit an untapped land forever either. I still like how I still like how we sideboarded. I think approaches can win the game pretty easily. Don't want to get flooded on them though versus a deck that we have to play spells versus. Um, maybe the cats aren't good enough, but they feel like they buy a decent amount of time. I don't care if we miss land drop 6 and 7. I think just getting 5 on turn 5 is pretty important. Uh, great. Uh, well. Have to keep this hands pretty terrible. We're down to 5 cards, yet our hand still probably just doesn't beat a good 5. I think I have to put that on the bottom. They scrout on top. Which means I would probably prefer to have their hand compared to theirs. We did hit a land though. So that's a good start. Got a little Zombro. We'll, we'll be happy to use the uh, Blessed Alliance on the Little Zombro. Sure, it's another Little Zombro. If they don't have a discard spell, we'll at least get to the cat. How would I describe the current set? Um, in what terms? It's, it's kind of mid-rangey-ish. It's pretty fun. I don't I don't know what terms you're looking for. Sorry, I'm not a not an overly intelligent man. Is Egyptian themed? Yeah, I'm definitely lagging. Alright, so there's another cat. We definitely don't want the sensor. I think I'm fine taking the cat. There's a fumigate. 
Hmm. He's down to two cards in hand. I'm just going to slam the Fumigate here. Oh yeah, there, there, there's a lot of good decks. Like in the tier one deck range, you have uh, you have the zombie decks, you have the teamer energy decks, you have the black green energy decks, you have the uh, there's a red deck wins deck, and in my opinion, there's also this blue white deck. Which uh, this blue white deck, by the way, is most people don't consider it that good. I do, but. Uh, and then in the tier two range, you have like a lot of ramp decks, uh, several other control decks. You have there's some delirium, delirium mid range options. Like, just feels like there's a lot of decks right now. He's only got one card in hand, and he's only got four mana in play. So like, I think the cats can just win. I think if he's making a zombie every turn with like the crit breaker to block a cat, that's good for us. Especially when we have the Glimmer in hand. But yeah, no, the, this this deck's pretty, o or format's pretty open. I, on a personal level, and that's just me, I think the red deck's a little too strong, and I think it uh, affects some deck decisions a little too much. But, but uh, that may just be me. Like, there's still plenty of decks. There's plenty of decks that can win. I've actually compared this format uh, to Modern multiple times. I think this format's a lot like Modern. I think there's just a lot of very strong decks, and any one of the strong decks have the opportunity to win. That's up, Total. Uh, oh, Spam, since you said you're coming back to the chat, or coming back to the game, I highly suggest you go to TotalMTG's Twitch chat and follow his channel and check out some of his YouTube videos. He does very good content, especially the YouTube videos, like post-rotation decks, yeah, a big variety of decks, a lot of brews. I pretty much only play Blue White Approach right now. I've been playing it for like a month or whatever, so like there's not a lot of variety on this stream, but... You get plenty of variety on a stream like his. And especially his YouTube videos are just very well put together. And keep in mind in about 30 minutes, the Candio will also be streaming. The Candio is a very quality player. I guess I should get links to people that I like to advertise. Alright, well we don't want either of these lands. Bottom, bottom. Definitely bottom bottom, yet I drew both of them. I mean, you earned them, Mander. It's just true. You put out some great content. So anyway, we'll attack with cats now that he can't block. Which is just really good for us. And they out they gain they gain just a thunderous amount of life as well. That's the third cat we've drawn this game, which is just very very weird, especially since he uh, since we got hit by what could potentially be the scry bug, though it's not obviously you don't know that it's a scry bug. Like just drawing those two cards will happen some percentage of the time, so like I shouldn't blame it on the scry bug, obviously. But because it's Modo, and Modo is a quality program, I definitely want to. <laughs> oh, I always want to always blame it. Alright, well, we're going to keep attacking. As of right now, he can either trade both of these for this and take six, or he can just trade one of these and take seven with a chump block. But, just going to keep attacking. If nothing else, I just want to gain the life. So we have three lethal attackers for the following turn. So he really needs to draw like a Liliana's Mastery. Liliana's Mastery would be very good for him. Thank you. I appreciate it. I I try. I got a lot to learn. I learned something sweet on YouTube last night, which made me happy. All right. Well, so escalate two, untap two of our creatures, and gain four life.
he wasn't going to attack anyway, of course, but like, uh, oh wow, I should have paid attention. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> I should not have played that card. I keep, I forgot that it had a second mode. It's, it's been so long since that's happened. Well, that's embarrassing. That was embarrassing. He still needs an answer. So he's got to have like a fatal push in his hand or whatever. And even if he has a fatal push, he's just jump blocking. So I think we win regardless. But yeah, that was kind of embarrassing. I, was, I thought I was genius. I was like, oh man. I was like, we're going to get him. He's going to make us discard this card. But he's not going to get a card. But whatever. So the cats are great. The cats have always been great. The cats are wonderful. So today we uh, we beat zombies this round, black white zombies. We beat zombies this round. And then we like played this game here. I don't remember what we beat. I have to check. Oh, we beat green and white ramp. Sure. And we lost to God Pharaoh's Gift, and we lost to Blue White Monument. So, that's how we went today. Uh, pretty decent. It's obviously better than the last couple days. Uh, the changes we made to the deck today, we added a second Gideon to the deck, and we added an approach to the deck over the two of 40 of the councils we have been playing. The just Gideon's been great. I really like having a second Gideon in the deck to increase my odds of drawing it. Um, not not 100% positive on the approach yet. Like Doing turn 7, turn 8 approach is pretty nice, but uh, it also can give some clunky draws. We'll have to test that more. I'm pretty sure that I'm definitely keeping the Gideon in the main deck, though. In the sideboard, we were trying two Gideon's Interventions and a Dispel. We cut... Uh, we cut one authority of the... We cut the Gear Hulk we had, the Sphinx we had, and uh, neither the Gear Hulk nor the Sphinx has ever felt particularly good, so I don't mind cutting those. But we also cut the Limvalas, and the Limvalas, not having the Limvalas have worried me a lot. Like, I think they're pretty good versus Zombies, I think they're pretty good versus Team or Energy, so I think I'm going to want them back. I'm not sure. There's a spell. We only, it was only good in one match, and, like, they even had to negate for it, but, like, it could have been great there. Uh, the intervention seemed fine versus the ramp deck they did work, but uh, probably going to try to work the two Lumvalas back in the sideboard. Not exactly sure how yet. The cards that seem the least useful in the sideboard are these four here. Though, all four of them do a job, and I think I want that job still. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, we feel very favored game one, but game two, Mausoleum Wonder is just so hard to beat. Like, between, they have negates, they have dispels, and they have Mausoleum Wonders, and like, if they ever do resolve a God's Pharaoh's Gift, like, game one, you don't really care, because you just keep killing the creatures and playing that game, but like, game two... In game three, when they're buying back the Mausoleum Wonders, like they're buying back a counter spell, and you have to keep resolving four and five drops to win. Anyway, so I guess I'm going to look for a co or somebody to host, then go do a small workout and find some dinner. If there's any more questions while I'm looking for somebody to host, let me know. Uh, Simmel's playing Hearthstone, so it looks like it's just going to be Gabe Nassif again. Uh, he's playing the blue-black God Pharaoh's Gift, which I think is his favorite deck for the French Nationals. I believe he's French. Um, he says he thinks it's Tier 1. I don't know if it is or not. It looks like he's actually paired versus blue-white approach right now. Uh, thank, thanks for stopping by. Oh, wow. Thank you for the subscription, uh, Video Wave. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate that a lot. That's actually really awesome. I think you are the second person to subscribe that I don't actually know in real life. I am very humbled by that, and that rocks. Um, but yeah, so make sure that you guys 
check out this host if you're in the mood for it. Um, the Candio is going to log on in about 20 more minutes and go to Total's uh, Twitch chat and look at his YouTube. It's great. His YouTube is a lot better than my YouTube. Anyway, so let's host Gabe Nassif and go have us a nice little walk and lift us some weights. Take care, everybody.